Uh, all right, class. Well, I wanted to show you today how to create your uh, first InDesign assignment. So the first thing you're going to do is open InDesign. So I have my InDesign open right here. Um, I'm on a Mac, so if you're on a PC, things will be a little bit different. But I click on my dashboard. I go to Adobe InDesign, and it opens right here. Uh, uh, this first screen is just your new, um, new page screen. So what I'm going to do is say create new right here. You can also use these right here. 8.5 by 11 is a preset. So if you click on that, it gives you the 8.5 by 11 preset. But what we're going to do is we want to do a little bit more custom. So we're going to say create new. Um, we're going to change our PICAs to inches just to make it a little bit more familiar. PICAs is the industry standard, but inches, a lot of people prefer to use inches. Just keep it a little bit more simple. So we're going to say inches 8.5 by 11 is our standard page size. Um, we don't need facing pages for this, so we're going to turn that off. And we're going to say three columns. So we want three columns of text eventually. The gutter, we can just leave that as standard gutter right here. So we're going to come over here to margins and we're going to turn on our margins 0.25 or 0 0.125. 0 0.25 is probably pretty good. So I have my margins on and then I'm going to go to my bleed. We want to make sure our document has bleed all the way around. So 1.125 inches is a good bleed. Make sure when you're doing your bleed, it says inches if you're working in inches. If you're working in picas, Let's change this to PICA so you can see what it looks like. So PICAs, it'll look a little bit different. 0 0.9. All right. So I'm going to keep this in inches, though. And then I'm going to hit Create. All right. So here is our standard page. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to flow in some text. So I'm going to grab my text, um, my text tool right here. And I'm going to go right into the column right here. And I'm going to drag out a text box. All right. Um, as you can see, the text box just allows me to get my cursor in there. And what I want to do is fill it with text. So I'm going to go up to the top of my menu, look for my type, and I'm going to go all the way down here to insert uh, fill with placeholder text. So I'm going to click that and it fills it with placeholder text. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because what I want to do is I want to increase, um, I want to have more than one uh, text box. So if you see this little plus sign right here, that means that you can extend the text from one box to another box and another box. So we're going to do three boxes. So I'm going to click on the little plus sign with my mouse and then I'm going to drag out a second text box. All right. I'm just lining that up. And I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to click on the little red plus sign and I'm going to drag out a third box. So the nice thing about this is all the boxes are linked. So this was what all this text is what was in that first box of text and now I've extended it into three boxes. So if I make this first box long again, my other two boxes look like they're empty. So I can say edit again, type, I mean, sorry, and fill with placeholder text. And now we have placeholder text for all the boxes, but we want to make sure that we, we extend it. So before I put in that placeholder text, let's make sure that our boxes are fully extended. Type fill with placeholder text. All right, so now that we have our placeholder text on our page within, I'll extend that a little bit, within our text columns, I'm going to title that first layer of text by double clicking on layer one over here in my layers panel. And I'm going to title it text All right, and click OK. So if I turn off this eyeball, that gets rid of the, the text on my page. Next thing we want to do is we want to add in some imagery. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to grab a box, a rectangle frame tool, right? And I'm just going to add a frame to the middle of my page. You don't have to do it separately. You can just add the text in, I mean, the picture in um, automatically. But it's nice to have a frame for where you want the image to go. So once I have my frame on my page, let's put that in the correct text box. So I'm going to click right here, create new layer, change this to images. I'm going to capitalize that, images. Right? And I want that to be underneath my text. Images always have to go below text. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go uh, click on my box. So make sure it's selected. And then I'm going to go File, Place. And I found my images ahead of time. Um, if you want, you can pause it right here and go to the uh, internet and find some images. But I found some images that I wanted to use ahead of time. So I'm just going to click right here and grab my image. So if when I click on my box, it automatically fills it with the image. If I click on the center, this circle right here, this isn't a dragging point. This is allows it allows me to center it within the box. 
but as you can see my box is very big so all these points right here are my image so I'm just gonna grab it at one of the corners and hold down shift and I'm gonna make this smaller if I hold on option it'll also shift and option at the same time it'll uh, it'll uh, resize it from all the different sides as opposed to just grabbing it from one corner. So I have my image right there and it looks good. Um, I'm gonna grab my rectangle frame again. If you wanna click F, you can click F and that'll get you your rectangle frame. This one, I'm gonna drag down here to the bottom. Notice I'm extending it past the page edge. So right here is the page edge, which is also called the trim and I'm extending it all the way into the bleed. That's a tough concept for a lot of people, but um, you wanna make sure that you extend your any image or anything that has a color that touches the edge of your page, that should expend, extend past the edge into the bleed. So again, I have it selected. I wanna make sure that I'm on the right layer. If it shows up in the wrong layer, you can just click on the little blue box like I did and drag it back, drag it back down to the images. So I'm gonna go File, Place again, and I have my other image down here, so I'm gonna click my other image. Again, it's too large. This time though, instead of resizing it by hand, I'm just gonna go up here to object, say fitting, and what I wanna do is fit frame proportionally. Fill frame proportionally, sorry. All right, so then it filled the frame proportionally, so you can see it extends past the edge, but the top and bottom look good. All right, so con Command-0 or Control-0 allows you to zoom out. So I want to make sure that this is on the right layer, so it's on the wrong layer. So I'm just going to drag that down so that I can see it. If you want, you can extend these so you can see what's on those um, those uh, layers. So I have my images right there. So um, next thing we want to do is we want to have these the text flow around the images. So I'm going to turn off my text layer and click on this image right here. And I'm going to go to Window at the top here. And this shows all the different windows that I have. Uh, the one that I'm looking for is called text wrap. So right here is the text wrap. So I'm going to turn that on. And I like to have this uh, used. I like to use this a lot. So I'm just going to drag this over. I'm going to place it right here on my bar. Um, eventually, you can save these if you want. So we can come right up here. And we're going to say new workspace. And we're going to title this workspace FIU. And click OK. So as we work on our workspace, um, we can add things to it or take things away. So some of these things you, you may not want. Uh, properties, you definitely want to keep that up there. So that's very useful. Um, pages, you definitely want to have. So this shows you how when you're adding pages. So if I wanted to add another page, I could add another page. And I'll just show you. So that page shows up below the other one. Get rid of that. And we have our layers, obviously. So we want to make sure that we have our layers. To close these, you just click on the double arrow and that closes it. But let's go back to our text wrap. So we're gonna click on our text wrap and what we wanna do is we wanna wrap around our object shape. So we're gonna click right here. You could also, in this case, use a bounding box. But we're gonna come down here, wrap around object shape. Or bounding box, either one, we'll see. Um, I wanna make sure that it's not too taking the, the image as opposed to the text. So let's go back and turn our text again. And as you can see, it starts to wrap around our image. So I'm gonna lock this layer so that I can move this image around. So as I move it, so the text shifts with the image being moved. So that way I know that I'm, um, I'm allowing this to wrap around. And remember, don't grab it from the inside. I accidentally grabbed it from the inside and it shifted my page, my picture. But if you wanna grab it, you grab it from one of the spots that's not that big circle in the middle. All right, so next thing we need to do is add a title on here. So I'm gonna unlock my text layer and I'm gonna drag all these down to a nice suitable spot. And you can uh, just use the alignment features that automatically show up as you um, drag. And we're gonna put our text right here along the top. Uh, so whenever, remember, whenever you see a plus sign, that means there's text further on. There's more text beyond what we have here. So what I like to do when I'm creating uh, an InDesign document is I like to put a, an extra text box over here just so I know if I'm, if I'm actually flowing in real text from a, uh, let's say, a, um, a magazine or something. Uh, I have this little text box over here and then I make it a bright color so that I know what I'm missing. So let's say you have a client and they want you to add in text. 
you want to make sure that you give them all the text that they gave you. So right here, this is overflow text, and you can just leave that off to the side. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up here to the top, and I'm going to drag out a text box. Uh, you want to make sure your text box is the right font size. So I'm going to come back here. It should be 12 point or I don't remember what the directions say. You're going to have to look back at the directions. Um, I'm going to make mine 24 point and something that has a little bit bolder look to it. So impact just in general has a, a nice heavy look to it. So I'm going to title this headline and I'm going to increase my point size because it still seems a little bit small. So 48 looks good. I don't remember what the actual requirements for the assignment are, so you have to make sure that you're doing that. We definitely don't want it to be left aligned for this assignment. We probably want it to be right aligned. So again, make sure that you're following the assignment and putting that where it needs to be. Your alignment right here. So if we go to paragraph, these are all your alignments right here. So we have center, we have right, we have left, and then we have things like justify. Um, and these are the same alignments but when you have different text it aligns the text differently so if I click on this text down here and I say justify it fills up the box gets rid of all the the rag on the right hand side of the thing and if I want to do a left to justify left alignment it it fills it up until you get to a, a, a paragraph and then it stops it so we're gonna go back to just our standard left alignment and we have our text here right alignment and we gotta next find that the predominant color of these images so let's look for the predominant so I want this headline to be the predominant color so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my text highlight it um, I wanna come over here to my eyedropper tool to get to this remember our layers are on top so if I click right now I'm just getting the the text right here and I don't want to change my text like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock that and then I'm gonna come over to my eyedropper make sure I'm on the correct layer and I'm going to hold down Option because mine had already been selected once. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on the gray of this head right here. Let's see if I can. So I got that grayish color. Um, and I think that would be a good, um, a good color for my text. Might be a little bit too light. And I'm going to add this to my swatch. Add RGB swatch. Click OK. And now I have that color in my swatches. So I'm going to come back up here to my text select my text and find my swatches and add that color Oops, to my text all right so um, there's lots of ways to do this a little bit quicker um, but you always want to keep track of the colors that you use and um, add them to the swatches appropriately so if you want to title this you can title this to something else you can rename it um, you don't have to use the name that it says right there um, so we can take off name with color value and we can title it gray of main, main image and you don't have to do that but uh, just so you know how to rename them so I think this is pretty much the entire project um, you know make sure you have your layers text images um, and I think we want a background layer as well just to have it background and I'm gonna drag that all the way to the bottom of my layers by grabbing and dragging it so now I have my, oh, I changed the wrong one. So this is text. And layer three is background. All right, so those are your standard layers, text, images, and background, and they should be in, in that order. Um, you can have as many layers as you need, but that should be good for most of the projects for this class. So I'm going to stop the tutorial right there. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'm sorry it's a little bit long. I got distracted in some places, but um, the general idea is you want to keep your layers. You want to make sure you're adding images. Make sure you have text wrap. For these images, I'm going to select both my images. I'm going to go to my text wrap here, and I'm just going to add a little bit around my text, my, my images, so that I have a little bit of space around them. Um, and that's to make sure that uh, my text isn't directly on those images. All right. Down here, you try not you try not to have anything where it's like a small box like this. So I'm just going to drag this up and stop it right there and make this image a little bit larger since I had some extra. And now it looks a little bit nicer. Um, try not to have some weird, awkward angles or awkward text boxes that aren't consistent with the rest of your boxes. All right, so that's it.